Nobody ever dreamed that this case would have a worldwide audience. The mere suggestion of filmmakers having access to the courtroom and family made Kratz apoplectic and desperate to get their footage seized and the project tied up in legal red tape more than once. He's now desperate to sway public opinion and points often to the contents of the documentary series, not the transcripts and evidence. I could be wrong about some or all of this, but all of the evidence fits with a similar scenario. How Mark Weigert knew the Barb Janda appointment was Stephen Avery on November 3rd without having received that info from Singular. Why unemployed nursing graduate was making frequent deliveries to construction worker Scott Blodorn. How Mike Hallback knew to grieve for Teresa Hallback before her car was found. Why Ryan Hilligus and Mike Hallback were acting so squirrely about being on Avery Salvage Yard. Why Ryan Hilligus was working so closely with law enforcement and deemed untrained law enforcement and allowed on crime scene. He was probably familiar to Queso as a drug informant. Why Ryan Hilligus, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn were not investigated. And that is curious. Again, when a, when a female is, goes missing or is met with foul play, it's usually the significant other, boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. Ryan scratches, murder and or planning the car, only one of 10 colored tubes in unsealed evidence box, totally ignored as crucial evidence, the Xander road sign, the Sakaiki letter, computer searches, quarry bones, large amounts of blood in the back of RAV, missing parts, damage and VIN tampering to RAV, all used for blackmailing witnesses not helpful against Stephen Avery. Kratz's email to Kulhane that Weigert was checking the 1985 blood, what it was, likely the preservative. Zero tire residue plus unburned leaves and grass around the burn pit. Shock and horror. What could be more shocking than Teresa Hallback's closest friends and brother and corrupt law enforcement working to get two innocent men convicted of a crime by using his closest friends and family against him? And this was written by Mr. Precedent at TikTok Manitowoc. Is this the best theory as of yet on the, what happened to Teresa Hallback and how the investigation was so bizarre? He also wrote this, I suspect Ryan Hilligus, Mike Hallback, and Scott, and Scott Blodorn were in a secret drug business with Mark Weigert and probably Ken Kratz a known drug addict. That could explain why an unemployed nurse was dropping stuff off to a construction worker a few times a week, <laughs> why law enforcement referred to Ryan Hilligus by a different but similar name, and why no law enforcement thought it was odd that the untrained law enforcement ex-boyfriend of the victim was allowed to wander around a crime scene while the coroner was banned due to conflict of interest. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> The vic the missing person's ex-boyfriend <laughs> is allowed to wander the crime scene to his leisure while the coroner is banned. It explains why Mike Callback was grieving before his sister's car was found and why Ryan Hilligus butted in to make sure Mike Callback didn't answer the reporter's questions incorrectly. I think Teresa Hallback died of a drug-related accident or crime. Maybe she OD'd or threatened to expose their crimes. Keep in mind, Scott Blodorn is her roommate, who is the friend of her ex, Ryan Hilligus. And they called Mark Weigert directly instead of 911 for help because a reported drug-related death or murder would get them all in trouble. According to the singular rep's testimony, he couldn't have numbers for calls. I think they broke into Teresa Hallback's account to try to get her information so they'd have an explanation for how Mike Weigert, Mark Weigert, knew on November 3rd that Teresa Hallback had talked to Stephen Avery, but it wasn't there. Ryan Hillig's phone calls were inquiries as to why they couldn't print out the info they needed, and the fake list was made to hide the fact that it wasn't available. They had either Teresa Hall back her phone or her completed paperwork between October 31st and November 3rd. Weigert's statement that a reverse search 
of Barb Janda's number led to St Stephen Avery when we know it could not have is the first provable lie in the case. He lied because he was involved in the framing from the very beginning. For the record, I think Teresa Hallback made it home and died there, either by accident or attack. I suspect Ryan Hillegas, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn were involved in a secret drug business with Mark Weigert. And they called him instead of 911 because a drug-related death would get them all in trouble. When he learned Teresa Hallback had, vid had visited Stephen Avery via her paperwork, phone, or stories told by Ryan Hillegas, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn, he knew they could solve two problems at once. He called Lank, and they decided to frame Stephen Avery. The original crime scene was supposed to be Xander Road, where there was an attempt by Manitowoc Sheriff's Office to frame Stephen Avery several months prior, but when they learned about the recorded jail calls with Jody, they had to move everything to Avery Salvage Yard. All of the evidence, lies, and strange behavior fit into this scenario or one very similar to it. If Mark Weigert was involved in a secret drug business involving seized or controlled substances, he would benefit by not having to explain how his cohorts were involved in a drug-related death. I'm sure being heralded as a hero who cracked the case within minutes of the phone call and put Stephen Avery away doesn't hurt either. And some responses here, that's assuming a drug connection, and you may as well say the same about Remaker. He was the drug investigator from Manitowoc. Except, of course, Remaker was not co-leader of the investigation. Mr. President responds, Remaker was likely involved too. He and Weigert had a couple of very interesting phone calls about the plan. And he commented that the source of the tightly controlled drugs that killed Carmen Bootwell were untraceable. Perhaps Remaker is one of the people who has spilled the beans to Kathleen Zellner. It all could have started as a cleanup for a secret operation that went awry. I do think Kratz took over the orchestration of the planting once the crime scene was moved. That's why the evidence reads like a checklist of what would be needed at trial with so little thought put into how it was found or treated. Another response here, it would explain the missing screws for the RAV4 dashboard. It would explain the possible Martinez connection to Avery Salvage Yard, the comments about a baggie, Queso page 980. It would explain the statements made by Jody's stepfather, Queso page 1052. It would explain how Teresa knew on October 30th when chatting with Harriet on Yahoo that she would be in the area of Avery Salvage Yard the next day, October 31st. Another post by Mr. President here, I think Ryan Hillegas and Mark Weigert had something going on that made it necessary to frame Stephen Avery to protect both of them. Probably drugs. I think the 22 calls between Ryan Hillegas and law enforcement on the night the RAV was planted show it was a coordinated effort. Another post here by Mr. President, I think, just a hunch that may be wrong, that Ryan Hillegas, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn were involved in selling drugs confiscated by Calumet drug investigator Weigert, possibly Kratz also, and that Teresa Hallback died at home in the presence of Ryan Hillegas, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn of an overdose or injury that would have gotten them all in serious trouble if a coroner learned that she died at home and did an autopsy. They called Weigert for help and got the idea to call Lank, frame Stephen Avery, solve two big problems, and win some big awards and brownie points. I think Weigert is deeply involved in the framing and probably is the orchestrator of it until sweaty Ken Kratz took over. I think Ryan Hillegas was dropping off drugs to Scott Blodorn a few times a week and Teresa Hallback either overdosed and died or threatened to expose a secret drug business with queso and was murdered. She could also have been making deliveries, but I think Ryan Hillegas, Mike Hallback, and Scott Blodorn definitely had a personal reason to help law enforcement frame Stephen Avery and Bobby Dassey and Scott Tadiaicha all got blackmailed into helping. 